So the way we're going to do this is this is just for fun. Um, so there's there's no there's no prizes involved, but that you know there will be bragging rights if 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 you like. Um, all you need is something to write with and a piece of paper if you want to write down your answers and keep track of them. Um, I've split it up into two sections, so we'll go through the first uh, set of questions and then we'll stop and we'll go over the answers and you guys can unmute and um, and answer and then um, we'll go through the next batch and answer those. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started and I'll give a few seconds on each screen. Um, this first one here, if you've been up in the library and archives, this is um, this is our map that we have on the wall. It's it's um, the oldest map that we have of the county that shows all of the uh, land holdings on there. So it's a really great resource uh, for figuring out a the name the reason why streets have names in areas. You you can look at an area and, and recognize a lot of the family names and everything there. Um, it's a good thing to to nail people down to a certain area. So it's it's a great resource. But unfortunately, we only have it in the format on the wall. Um, and then there, you can access it at the Library of Congress website as well um, if you need to zoom in further and look at it at home. Um, so hopefully my batteries are working. So we'll go ahead and get started. If my batteries have died. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna advance it by hand. <laughs> Okay, so it's being recorded. Um, so obviously I'm gonna edit this now <laughs> because this video is, um, so you'll be able, you're automatically muted. You'll be able to unmute yourself later. Uh, so we'll go into round one. So our first question is, where were the original uh, Clark County Fairgrounds located? So go ahead and write it down. Okay. Question two. What former president of the United States visited Springfield during World War I to promote patriotism? Question three, who was Springfield's first African-American mayor? And um, if anyone is joining late, we'll be going, when we give the answers, we'll have the, the questions uh, again. So you'll be able to, um, to hear those again if you've missed them. I hear, hello. So question four, in what year was Springfield incorporated as a city? This is different from the year that we were founded. Question five is a, a range question. Um, within a thousand, I want you to guess how many telephones there were in the Springfield city limits in 1914. I don't expect anybody to know this unless you actually do know this off the top of your head. Question six. 
What was the date of the Battle of Piqua? And we'll give you an extra bonus point if you get the exact date right, year and um, month and day. And I'm, I'm gonna pause for just a second because I, I just realized I, I, my pictures aren't showing up on this. Just a second. Because most of these pictures, most of these have pictures on them and they seem to have disappeared. So I'm gonna take a second and switch to the, the one that's on our server because uh, it's some, for some reason it dropped all the pictures. Yeah, for some reason the pictures would probably help me get the right dates. Are you guys? Are you guys? So you guys didn't see didn't see any pictures? No. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to our uh, gonna go to the other file and pull it up. Something must have happened. Maybe the connection was bad, so it dropped the pictures out. I don't know. So I apologize. I did notice on that map you showed Clark County had an E at the end of it, Clark. Yes, and I, I was going to mention that if anyone, if anyone yeah. out there know, knows when exactly that changed, um, that would be great. But uh, all we know is that in the, uh, the 1870, between 1870 and 1875, it was dropped because the 1875 atlas does not have it. And it's, the 1870 atlas has an E on the end of Clark. So... Um, I'm not sure about if in official paperwork it always had the E on it, um, but that map uh, was from the 1850s. So, um, uh, sorry guys, it was working when I when I checked through before we started. Too, all the pictures were there, so I'm not sure what's happened. It's just messing with me. If you let me share my screen, um, I can play some music or something. Uh, sure. We can do uh, some Jeopardy. It's it's down. It's trying to download it. So I think what well, it looks like it's there. We go. It's opening it now. I think it must have been a file size thing that dropped them all out. And they're such good pictures. I hate to, I hate to not have them. So, there we go. This one's got the pictures. Okay. Okay. There they are. So, Still being difficult. There. Okay, Battle of Piqua. So the date of the Battle of Piqua with a picture, um, the, the mural that we have down in the museum and, and in the, the library and archives. Okay, question seven, back on track with pictures. The Fairbanks building at Fountain in Maine, shown under construction in 1906 here in this picture, replaced this building that burned in 1903. So we're looking for the name of the building that burned in 1903 that was on that same corner. So the Fairbanks is whatever you wanna call it now. It's um, First National, uh, some people call it, it's now officially called Whole Plaza, uh, but it was originally called the Fairbanks building. 
um, but it replaced a building that burned a few years earlier. And you'll see the other pictures you missed when we get to the answers. Question eight. What local man was Ohio's first Speaker of the House in Congress from 1881 to 1883? Question nine. This infamous gangster, active in the 1930s, robbed his first bank in 1933 in New Carlisle. Question 10, it's a two-parter. So the first question is, who, is the, who started Wittenberg? So we're looking for the name of the founder. And the bonus question is, what year was Wittenberg founded? Um, you can see this flag here is from um, Wittenberg College. Now it's uh, a university. Okay, so now we're gonna go into the answers. So this is where you guys can unmute yourself and shout it out. Um, we, can, we can debate them or discuss them or you guys can share any, any extra information that you may know. Um, and we'll go through the first set of questions. With pictures. So where were the Clark County Fairgrounds originally located? We've got a couple pictures here of the original location of the entrance and the uh, racetrack. I was going to say the local airport. Was it Davy Moore Park? It's Davy it, Moore Park. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it was South Yellow Springs where Davy Moore Park is now. So this is a, this is a sketch from the 1875 Atlas uh, showing the original fairgrounds location. Um, with that, that same entrance down here. And uh, so we know that the, the history of the fair was that it started in 1853, uh, but there was, a, there was a period where there wasn't a fair um, until uh, it moved out to its current location, which is the old uh, airport um, out on um, the name of that road just escaped me. Uh, where the fairgrounds are now. So today was the last day of the of the fair um, for for this year, um, but it moved out there. I think in 1958 or no, 1948 was when um, the fair uh, started out at that location. So there was a there was a bit of a gap in between where there wasn't always a fair. Um, that picture was on display for a while in. Um, the entry to Exposition Hall, and I always got a kick of how dressed up people were going mm -hmm. to the fair back then. <laughs> yeah, very dressed up. Not not quite the same. <laughs> no. <laughs> and I know, and I know this year it was a very different experience out at the fair. Yeah. But actually, yeah. it was probably a bit closer to uh, what the fair, what the earlier fairs would have been like. A lot more traditional, yes. So. Uh, okay, question two. Oh, this one's supposed to have a picture two. Well, hopefully the pictures haven't dropped. Maybe it just forgot on this one. Uh, what former president of the United States visited Springfield during World War I to promote patriotism? I put down Teddy Roosevelt. That's what I did too. Correct. You're right. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you're, you're, you're correct. Uh, so... Uh, the initial reason he he came here was uh, at the start of World War I, uh, Wittenberg's enrollment dropped by 50% because uh, it was a German-named institution and people were kind of uh, shunning it. And uh, he was friends with Harry Kissel, um, the civic 
and real estate leader who um, built Ridgewood. And he invited uh, Roosevelt to come speak at Wittenberg to change those false perceptions about, um, about the school. And he, he spoke at the Hiller Chapel and uh, talked about uh, that there shouldn't be discrimination against loyal Americans that were of German birth and descent. Um, and then later he spoke um, to a much larger crowd at Memorial Hall while he was here. So this is I a picture of- people know Harry Kissel is directly to Roosevelt's left. Yeah, so yeah, mm -hmm. here he is. That's Kissel. And I think we, we have, um, Wittenberg's president is on, is over here. His name was Charles Heckert. And then we've got ah. Dr. Roosevelt. No, wait a second. Do I have that right? Picture from left. Yeah, that's him. That's President Roosevelt Kissel. All right, question three. Who was Springfield's first African-American mayor? Robert C. Henry. Yes. Yeah, I put that down too. You know, it was Robert. interesting. I was on a civil rights trip a couple about a year and a half, almost two years ago, and we were down in uh, Selma, Alabama. There's a voting rights museum down there that we toured through, and Mayor Henry's picture is prominently displayed on the wall down in the museum in Selma, Alabama. Wow! Really? 1966 of a city of <laughs> fifty thousand or more. Mm -hmm. um, so he's down there. When, when I was there, I was really, really super excited and um, really thrilled and proud that. Yeah, you, you're right. He was the first. Um, mayor of a city this size and anywhere in the country um, um Af first african-american mayor so he the way he uh he got into uh, onto the city commission he was elected in uh 1961 and then uh he was re-elected in 65 and then um that was before the mayor of, a, of the commission was directly elected like it like it is now um, and then, so the commission instated him as, as mayor in 66, and he served until 68. And then I think he, he was, and then he got off the commission in 69. Um, but he was uh, mayor when the fountain was put back out in front of, of our building on Fountain Avenue. Um, so he was instrumental in, in getting a, a fountain back there. I've never seen the uh, the large picture with our building in it. Yeah, that's a great one. I think that, that, is, that, that is ours, right? Uh, I think it came from the new Sun collection. His ah, the, fo okay. the, fo the folder on him, yeah. Very nice. He was a good looking man in his mm -hmm. youth. And the Robert and he started the Robert C. Henry Funeral Home in '51, so he got his training okay. at um, yeah. the Cleveland College of Mortuary Science, and then came back here and, and opened up the funeral home, which is still. Um, active today. What year was Springfield incorporated as a city? 1803. 1850. 1850 was as a city. Uh, 1801 was when it was founded. Uh, 1827, I looked that up today, was when it was incorporated as a village. Um, okay, I had, I had eight, 1820 something in my yeah. Life, so yeah, the village the village was so I I'm not sure that I can't I can't remember the difference in in um, numbers for um, village versus city, but this is the the city crest and I can't remember the story behind the city crest. It was it's it's a more recent design. I don't know, Casey. I don't remember know if you remember know anything about that or if anybody else. Um, I don't think I've ever noticed seal. the city crest or a seal. The seal. The seal. It, it is, yeah, a, there is a more recent one. It is. It is a well. This was. No, I mean this is more recent than you would. Yeah. I mean it's not like from 1850. Yeah, um, no, but, I can't, but I can't. But I can't. But I can't remember. I can't remember how old it actually is, um, or the story behind it. Off. off how here. is I'm it? I'm going to guess 1970s. How is it used, mm -hmm. or how is it? Where, um, where do we see it usually? It's on it's on um, the city's website, I think, in okay. in official city um, city things. Yeah, you've got um, the you got civic theater down there in the the lower right corner. All the different organizations and four H tennis racket. And, oh, I I think that is it. Yeah, I'll have we'll have to do some more. Um, yeah. I don't know if we have a lot of information in our archives about the, the story behind the seal, but we can see if there's 
um, anything anything out there. Yeah, in the uh, 1950s, 1960s, Springfield was the mecca east of the Mississippi of tennis. So that's why you'd have a tennis racket there. Yeah. Dr. Dredge. Yeah. Is that bottom picture of Madonna in the trail? It is. Yeah, yeah. it is. So, all right, we'll go to qu question five. Within a thousand, how many telephones were there in Springfield city limits in 1914? About 1,500. No, a lot more than that. Well, yeah, just give us the number and then we can compare each other's All right, <laughs> All right. it's 11,333. Uh, okay, I was oh, I way more than that, actually. More than I thought. So this is an this is an old this is an older operator picture here. Um, my gra my grandmother was one of the early telephone switchboard operators in Springfield. Oh really? That's so yeah. Neat. Uh, we have a we have an operator's headset, and I think on on one of the the calls of uh, these these programs we did previously, I I shared a picture of um, of someone um, Cindy Catanzaro, her grandmother was an operator and they used her as a model for some of the Ohio Bell ads. And she oh, had shared, wow. she, had, oh, yeah. she had shared one of those images that they had used of her. Um, but the, the first telephone came here in um, July, 1880, four years after the first telephone. Oh, um, and there great. was, a, it, in the, in the, in the we beginning, there was, there was impressive. only, <laughs> yeah, we were, and, but there was only 36 subscribers at that time. <laughs> um, and then the last, uh, board operators were used in um, 1978 um, before at Ohio Bell <coughs> using using operators, which that, I mean, to me, that, that seems like it was still a long time that they were still using operators. Um, you know what the population was at the time of this um, question? 1914. Uh, I Wikipedia could tell you that. I know that they have. I know that they have a list of the census years, so you could probably you'd have to get probably 1910s. Wouldn't um, have been the neighborhood of 60,000. Um, Harry Kissel's motto in the 19 teens. Was it the teens or the 20? Yeah, maybe oh. around that. Because I know I know later it was 80,000. Um, oh, in the 60s it was 80, 80 some thousand. So 60 sounds about right. I had a brother that was a worker for Ohio Bell back in the 1960s, the 70s, and uh, he worked on telephone poles. So that he, he really kept me informed about what was going on with Bob Bell at that time. Yeah, we've got a great picture of guys on telephone poles. I was trying to find that to put in the slide today, but I could not no. find it. No. Um, okay, so the date of the Battle of Piqua. Does anybody know that? Yeah, August 8th, 1780. Yes. Oh, I was late. August 8th, 1780. Um, so it was, that was the westernmost battle of the American Revolution. Um, and this is, the, this is the scene down in the museum where we've got the, the John Buxton um, mural and, and um, items that were recovered from the battlefield, um, including um, cannonballs, um, rifle barrels, and then we've got our, the prized piece of, of the collection is the um, Native American uh, Shawnee walking bow that was found um, and recovered. And, and the only reason it survived was the um, gentleman that had, had, had held on to it, had slipped it into the, um, the walls of his, his cabin to, to protect it from the story I'd heard was from, from his children. <laughs> Um, and then it was forgotten and, and found later when it was taken down. So some a piece like that probably would not have, have survived as well as it, as it did. Um, but the, oh, sorry. So we've got the um, young George Rogers Clark and uh, the older George Rogers Clark in that case too. I think Casey, wasn't the, the young one, wasn't, was that a commissioned piece? And that's, for, I mean, that's Buxton too. For, yeah, so that was, that was commissioned yeah, that was for, commissioned. for this yeah. case. Um, Which I think looks incredibly like Chevy Chase. <laughs> <laughs> but. I, think, I think it looks incredibly like uh, our, our George Rogers Clark that is uh, usually here for a night at the museum. Oh, yeah. And that, and that, you, see, and that you see out at the, the fair at New Boston. Uh, but the, the mural here has uh, a young uh, Tecumseh teenage Tecumseh down in the front represented. Um, Was that from the post office, that mural? No, that's, that's on the second floor of the museum. 
No, I mean, did it come oh. from the focus? No, it was, it was done for the, the Heritage oh. Center. Yeah. It looks like the same style. Um, but no, that was a commissioned piece in like early around 2000 when we opened here, mm. as far as I know. Yeah, I worked at the post office and uh, that wasn't there. Okay, question seven. The Fairbanks building at Fountain and Main, shown under construction in 1906, replaced this building that burned in 1903. So yeah, what? Perhaps. Yes. Yeah. So. Was it called Black's Opera House? It was Black's Opera House, yeah. yeah on, that, on that same corner. So it was built, it opened in 1869. Um, and then, and that fire um, was in February 1903 and it destroyed the Opera House. Um, the, y, the new Y was on that corner. Uh, there was a clothing store, uh, a hardware store, and I think a jewelry store. Um, the owner of the jewelry store um, was killed in the fire uh, at that time. Um, but this picture, I think, is probably from about the 1870s. It doesn't go far enough over. I don't. The, there, there was a church here later that's not in the picture. So I think that this would, um, this would place that closer to about the time it opened. This was this was a puzzle today that we shared on our Facebook page that you could do a puzzle of this picture. Um, it's a, it's a pretty neat um, image of it. Okay, question eight: What local man was Ohio's first Speaker of the House in Congress from 1881 to 1883? Brigadier General Kiefer. Yes. Joseph Warren Kiefer. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I, I did not, I did not include General on his, on, on his name here, uh, but yes, uh, J. Warren Kiefer. And uh, he has an interesting connection to the Battle of Piqua site. He was born uh, around, the, they have that, there's an excavated area up on the hill there over uh, above the, uh, the Hertzler house, which was, I, I think, close to where the site of his, his family's uh, cabin would have been. But he originally enlisted as a private in the Civil War um, and very quickly moved up in the ranks, um, was promoted to a ma major within 11 days because I think they figured out that this guy knows what he's doing and he shouldn't just be a private. Um, and he was, uh, became general of the 110th, uh, which was, had, had a lot of um, Clark County men in it. So we've got um, from the 1875 Atlas, his house on, on High Street and uh, this is, correct me if I, this is Bushnell Elementary? That's Kiefer. I mean, Kiefer, sorry, just nice. said the wrong name. Kiefer on, high, on um, which is now uh, U-Haul. Oh. Uh, well, that's on Pleasant Street, West Pleasant. Yeah. Kiefer? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting, it connect, I'm getting it mixed up with Bushnell too. Yeah, so that's the school there. Um, this is a picture from his, um, his funeral. So he lived a long time. Um, and that, that's an interesting, we have a, there's a gentleman that's been going through all of the newspapers from the earliest newspapers we have. And the sheer volume of articles on Kiefer, especially when it gets around his birthday, they would talk to him every year around his birthday to get his advice. And, and that's when we realized, wow, he's, <laughs> they, they, they talk to him every year. And he, and he uh, lived until 1936 and his, um, we need to just collect those into a little booklet. Yeah, I'd been I'd been noting them, and that's when I realized, oh, they t they talk to him just about every yeah. year. Yeah. I, I doubt that our I doubt that our current speaker of the house is going to have a similar reputation. <laughs> yeah, he, the opportunity to be buried in Arlington, as you can well imagine, but he chose Ferncliff Cemetery instead of Arlington because this is his hometown. So he spurned Arlington for Ferncliff. Wow because he loved Springfield. He was, he was a, he was an interesting man. I know he, um, I mean, he, he came back um, to serve during the, the Spanish American war. And yeah. I, he was still Trying. around during, he was still around during world war one. And, and he, what, he offered and what his happened. services. He did. He that did. letter is, that letter was also published in the newspaper and he, he admitted that, um, 
he could pretty much just sit behind desk at that point, but you know, he thought he still knew his business and was willing to offer any help that he could. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The World War One. Yes. Yeah. So I'm saying Spanish American War, he was in he was in combat walking into Havana. Mm -hmm. And um, McKinley gave him his major general's second star at that time. One of our oh. favorite Springfielders. <laughs> Okay, question nine. This infamous gangster, active in the 1930s, robbed his first bank in 1933 in New Carlisle. John Dillinger. Dillinger. Yes. So we've got here, the, that building still stands. Um, I think it's like a, a candle shop now. Um, got some in, in, in other, other things in there. Um, but it's got this, this thing on the side of the building about the, the first, the, when the robbery was, but it, it it actually has the date wrong. Um, the date was June 21st, not June 10th, but this is an article here um, from the Dayton Daily News um, because I know that the right state had done, had done something about the anniversary of it and um, it was pointed out to them that the date was wrong and they called us to, to verify and we went back to the papers to just to verify once again that yes, the date was <laughs> June 21st. Um, I'm looking at the 48 cent gas headline. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's bigger than the robbery headline. You want to talk about <laughs> shocking. <Yeah. laughs> he ended, he, that, but that was his first uh, major robbery. He stole $10,000 uh, from, from that bank. Back then, that was a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay, question 10. Who started Wittenberg? Ezra Keller in 1845. Yes. 44 is when he founded it, 45 is when it was chartered. So it depends on your oh, date. Oh, 44, 45. Yeah, we'll, we'll accept both. So yeah, um, in that founded case. in 44 and he chartered in 45. And when it was originally founded, they um, held some of the classes in the basement of um, First Lutheran. Yep. Yeah, on uh, High Street, which is still standing. Uh, it survived Colonel Collier. <laughs> yep, yep. Well, now I, I was going to say, I, I wonder... That, I mean, now that congregation has the, has different light that hit, can hit that building now after all these years, now that Pearl Collier's down, <laughs> gone. There won't be such a wind tunnel to mess up your hair on Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're going to go into round two. Um, so if you guys can mute yourselves again, or just don't say the answers out loud right now, we'll go through these. Um, question 11. Uh, what guarded the first jail in Springfield? What? So, question 12. How high is the Enon Mound? We've got a picture of a, a woman here for scale. <laughs> <laughs> Although she's, I think she's pretty far in front of the mound. <laughs> Question 13. What oil company started in Springfield? This is a picture from the museum. Question 14, where was Springfield's Children's Zoo located? This is an article here about uh, the Children's Zoo being represented in the Memorial Day Parade. And I think um, National Trail has this old um, circus wagon that they, that they restored that was used for the zoo. Um, this article is from 1963, but the zoo would always uh, reopen uh, on Memorial Day. So where was it located? Question 15, what two Ohio governors came from Springfield? Meaning they, they didn't have to have been born in Springfield, but they, they lived a good chunk of their lives in Springfield. Question 16, 
This local 19th century artist who came from a family of artists was known for his portraits and landscapes. We've got an example here of Niagara Falls. Question 17 is about the map. Uh, this 1859 map of the county was based on the land surveys of what early local surveyor? No, this is very unlikely that people might know this, but I, I cropped his name out of the top here because his name is, is on the map. Question 18, just north of Tremont City in the county line was this popular swim club whose coconut lounge hosted major acts such as the Beach Boys and the Four Seasons. So this was a popular destination for people from um, Clark County to go to. Question 19. What were the three fraternal organizations with state homes in Springfield, earning it the nickname, the home city? So we're looking for the names of the, the fraternal organizations that were represented. Question 20 <laughs> was mentioned earlier. <laughs> in 1948, this local dentist started a youth tennis program that served over 17,000 local children over 40 years. So we're looking for the name of the dentist, which I'm, I'm certain there are those of you on here that know this one already. All right, we're gonna go into the answers. So if you aren't unmuted and you, and you want to do that, you can unmute yourself and shout out the answers here. So question 11, what guarded the first jail in Springfield? A bear. Bear was in a cage. Oh. Yeah. So yes, it was a bear. I could not find a picture of the bear. So I thought, <laughs> Poor that, thing. I thought that the bear probably looked something like this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, the first jail was built in 1851 and the superintendent was uh, William Whiteley, um, which uh, was a surprising fact that I hadn't, I hadn't realized. Um, and it was on spring and high. Um, well, on, on the south side of Spring between Maine, uh, High and Maine. And uh, it could accommodate uh, 16 prisoners or 32 if they put uh, two or more to a bed, which they did in later years. Um, and then the sheriff's resident, residents in the county offices were on the second floor. So we've got a, a picture back here. Um, this, is, this is right towards, uh, right before it was torn down, um, the picture here. Um, and then the, the later jail opened in 1879 on, on Columbia. And Natalie, can you tell me again where this location was? So this was on the, let me think, okay. East side of Spring Street. So okay. if you're going down Spring, so it would be about where the um, parking lot is for St. Raphael's. Oh. So it would have been before the... Um, uh, the post office was built there. Okay. Roughly. I think it might have been a little bit further over um, on that side. But, okay. Question 12. How high is the Enon Mound? Anyone have a guess? <laughs> 25 feet? Yes. What did you, what did you say? 
25 feet, just a guess. Well, it's it's 40 feet. Yeah. So this is a picture from um, the 1930s from our, our Houston Moores collection. Um, <clears throat> but this stands, you know, an Enon, uh, the the Enon uh, log house uh, is uh, is ne near that. Um, and there's a, a roundabout there to drive around it. But as far as we know, I know that um, we have an exhibit about um, early uh, prehistoric archaeology and, and mound culture. I, I don't believe that there is anything in this mound. Casey, is that correct? That there's not? Is she still on here? I I've we always heard that there was nothing. I don't. That there, I don't believe so. I don't. I don't believe there's anything in that. Yeah. I don't. I don't believe there's anything in our collections. If, no, I don't. I, can, I. I don't think there's anything in it um, from what I've seen. But it was a, a, a an Adena culture um, had had built the mound. So that's between 800 BC to to one AD. Okay. Question thirteen. What oil company started in Springfield? Marathon. Yeah, bonded oil. That's bonded oil. I, I, I oh, think. Bonded. Uh, bonded. So, bo so bonded marathon was, had something to do with marathon. Right? Um, actually, it was Speedway. I think. Good, yeah. think. Um, didn't it be? It's now Speedway. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah. Yep. Um, so they started. It was founded in 1932 by Paul Deere. Which, interestingly, I ran across a picture of his house today, going through the paper. <laughs> but. Um, uh, and then we've got this, uh, this was a more recent donation, this um, bonded oil uh, dividend stamp book. So people would collect the stamps and then send it off and they would be paid um, a, a dividend. So money out of the, the profits um, were given to the shareholders um, if they collected their stamps. Now, so this, I, yeah. You spoke about Paul Deere's house. Um, I don't know whether you knew what became of it. The federal government took it over when they began to build Buck Creek. They used it for a long time as one of, as their headquarters after they made him move out. Um, and he, it was at the end of Yazel Road, his driveway went west from there back into the woods. It's now part of the Buck Creek State Park. It's still standing, isn't it? I don't know whether they tore it, they quit using it, but I don't know whether it's still standing or not. Actually, I think I remember somebody contacting us about it a few years ago that it was still standing but in, in bad condition and they had they had lived there at one point, the person who contacted, I believe. I'd forgotten about that till just now, <laughs> that that's where that, um, but yeah, so that's, that's interesting. I wonder if it's still standing now. I, I do, I mean, it was a number of years ago, so it might have been they had, were contacting us because it was going to be torn down soon. So that would be run by the Army Corps of Engineers then or because uh, don't they maintain the yeah and the they they rented it out to a state patrolman named uh, Caressel they lived there for several years uh, before they took it over and started using it as an office and okay that was who contacted it was Larry Larry, oh. Cor Larry Caressel <laughs> okay now it's coming back to me um, so yeah that, so I think I think he may have contacted because they were going to be tearing it down I'll have to check back with him and see if that if that was the case um so the, this dividend stamps, was that something, I'm not sure the time frame on this. Uh, when I first saw this, I thought this was something like um, ration stamps. Um, so I'd had to look up what dividend stamps was. I, is a, that, it, was that a common thing? Um, there's a 248 in the left-hand corner of the cover mm -hmm. where the seal is. I don't know if that's a date. It, I mean, it looks like it could be. But yeah, this I wasn't familiar with this, you know, way of, of customers getting payment from a company um, by collecting this way. I thought that I was like pretty. Buying war bonds when ten yeah. cents a stamp. So, but it says compare with other any other stamp plan. So other people, I mean, that must have been a, a common thing. Hmm. It was that um, a Palmer's that used to give out green stamps? Mm -hmm. and that then, was later. Yeah. That was oh, later. It went up to the sixties and seventies. And yeah. then there was I've heard of plaid stamps. That was Yeah. Um Big Bear had them too, I think. Anyway, I don't know what kind that, I don't remember Big Bear what kind, but I think they had stamps and Fulmers had the stamps. Mm. 
So this is a question about the Springfield Children's Zoo, where it was located. Right, where the dam for Clarence J. Brown Dam is now. Yes. In so park area. It is, it is, it is, that area is now underwater. So it was old, old Reed Park. So the, there was a golf course there. Um, there were some baseball diamonds. There was parts of farms. So, so this was a, this was a, um, uh, this little, there's a tiny little, you can't see it, but this was a little map that uh, a woman had, had hand, done a hand-drawn map for us of the houses that she remembered that were in that area that are now um, where the dam is because her, her house was one that was moved and um, some of the ones around her. So she had, um, we, we'd never seen a really good map of the, the homes that were in that area. So she had drawn out a little, a little map to give us a better idea of who, what was there and what was moved and, and, um, and everything. Um, but are you, do you guys know the, um, the dump that's out on, um, what is that street? Uh, Route four. Route four. Yeah, the one the, 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 that has the, um, that's marked by the giant uh, hippopotamus with its mouth open. Um, well, that's on Dayton Road. Yeah, Day Dayton Yellow Springs. That's the, that's the street. That's the street that it's on. So that was, I, w I was told that that was something that used to be out at the Children's Zoo. So the Children's Zoo was, um, the exhibits were based around nursery rhymes. Does anyone remember, recall it? I've, we don't have any good pictures of the zoo itself. We've only run across it in uh -uh. newspaper articles. Um, but we've never, we don't have any any actual pictures of it. Um, but we know they had like a like Peter Rabbit's home with the little little rabbits um, there, and 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 I know there's a, a little yellow lion um, that was for for trash that's now out at the um, at Snyder Park at the new um, uh, playground there uh, that 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 was that was um, saved from from the the children's zoo as well. I haven't been able to find any information about when exactly it closed, but we know that it was open in the late fifties, at least through the early sixties from the newspaper articles we found. Is Bob still on the call here? Bob Holsizer? Bob was doing, uh, re he was doing research on, on the zoo going through the papers. And that's how we found a lot of, a lot of the information that we have. Um, it was a junior chamber of commerce uh, project that they helped um, run and maintain it. So someday, some, somebody out there hopefully has some more information on that that we can um, find more. Whoops, and I've jumped out of it. Okay, question 15. What two Ohio governors came from Springfield? James Rhodes. Rhodes, I couldn't think of his name. James Rusty Rhodes. Rhodes. Nace Bushel. Yeah. Yep. Bushnell. So Asa Bushnell was... Um, he was governor from 1896 to about 1900, and he died not long after that. He had two um, terms, they had two two-year terms for governor back in those days. So he's at 96 to 98, then again from 98 to 1900. And he died in 1904. Okay, so yeah, he died not not long after he um, returned. So yeah, his home his home is the um, Richard Draft and Dunbar funeral home now. Um, so this is from the the second floor uh, exhibit. Uh, where we've got uh, him and his uh, wife Ellen, and uh, uh, Jim Rhodes was the governor in the 1960s. Yes, he was governor from uh, 63 to 70, and then 75 to 83. Um, so he had, I think, a total of four terms. Did, but split. Did, he leave, did he live in Springfield? He did. He yeah. came to Springfield in his teens. Went to started out at Central uh, Junior High left and went back to Jackson County where he was from um, and then came back and, and went to um, re-enrolled at Springfield High School and graduated with the class of 1930. Wow. So this is him in the, from the 1930 yearbook. Um, he played um, track and, um, and football. In the book that we, that um, Tom Stafford wrote for the uh, anniversary of United Senior Services, there was something in there about Jim Rhodes dating or double dating with Betty Pitzer. Oh yeah. I, I say we uh I have I have a little thing here. <laughs> so his nickname was Dusty, because they said he raised dust Dusty. whenever he went 
said he was outgoing athletic and athletic, but as a student, he was not much for the books. Uh, focusing his efforts more on sports and his friends, T uh, Tuffy Gordon and Elwood Pritchard said that he was a friend to all the girls. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so yeah, he was a bit of a ladies' man, and um, he he hosted several of the um, uh, class of 1930s reunions at the governor's mansion. We've got some um, invitations there. Um, that were, were were sent to to his members of his class that the, that it was hosted there. So this is other stuff from our collection that was that was connected to him, including this um, great plate of all the um, of Ohio with him and when when he was governor. Question 16. This local 19th century artist who came from a family of artists was known for his portraits and landscapes. You know, Frankenstein. Yep, that's Godfrey Frankenstein. Um, I don't know too much offhand about the other Frankensteins in the family. I know that we've um, there's a, a booklet in the archives, and I know Virginia has done some more um, extensive research on the the other family members that were artists. But this is a, a painting that we have in our collection, a self portrait um, by Frankenstein. So this is what he looked like. There, there it doesn't are... look like a frog, scary monster to me. <laughs> no, and I, we think we think that the the family came from um, from Germany in 1831, and we think that they took their name from um, Frankenstein, their the, a castle near their area that they that they took that name. Um, the Springfield Art Museum has uh, some of his work. Yeah, they have that last. Uh, one of their last galleries there where they've got a lot of um, landscape pieces. They've got a, a few of those are his um, there. This, the one that was back here um, of Niagara, this was a, a traveling panorama show that, that went around and we, we found that it came here in um, 1855 and it was traveling the country and, and they, it was coming to Springfield. So they were, they were saying, you know, the local artist is his piece that's been traveling everywhere is now going to be here in Springfield. Um, so we, uh, 17, this 1859 map of the county was based on the land surveys of what early local surveyor? Was it Ludlow? No, oh, but he was, okay. he was an early local surveyor, but this particular map was Thomas Kaiser. Okay. Um, so the compass, if anyone's familiar with the compass that we have on display in the museum on the second floor, um, there's one in that, there's a triangular case um, that has inscribed on the, on the case uh, the names of a lot of the, the different surveyors that, that had used the compass because it was used to lay out the entire um, west, uh, large parts of the country. I can't remember offhand exactly which ones. <laughs> Um, but but Kaiser uh, had helped lay out a, lo a lot of um, of what became Clark County, um, and you can see um, this is from 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 surveys. This is a, what's at the top of the map, and this is our surveyors chain that's down in the museum. Um, and then this is one that we've got in the collection. This the one that's on display is not a full 100 length chain. Um, it wouldn't have fit in the case, but we've got this one. I think has has more of the lengths in it, and then other surveyors' equipment we have. But this is this is Kaiser here. Uh, he died in the 1880s, um, and the story his story is very sad. He was um, he was he he would often stay in the in the Bushnell building. No, that couldn't be right because he died in the 1880s. The Bushnell building was the 1890s. So it's the building that's where the Bushnell building is now. He used to, would stay there. And um, the story was that he uh, was found in the alley below the building. Um, this, the room that he stayed in had a door that opened onto the street. And the thought was that he had accidentally gone through that door sometime in the night um, and and fell, on to, fell down to the street. Um, mm. So it's sad because he, I mean, he had, was very instrumental in, in the layout of our, of our county and um, important in that way. Um, okay, 18. North of Tremont City in the county line was this popular swim club whose coconut lounge hosted major acts, such as the it, Beach it, Boys. It did Lake. No? Lakewood. 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 Oh, yeah. Well, here's, this is, this is Lakewood Beach. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> So um, this picture is from 1939. 
I think I'd, I'd heard that it, it changed later. This is when it was still. Um, so I'm not, I don't, if you guys have memory, I've seen pictures of it before it closed. It was completely different, um, but it was open until. Well, that, that's um, a sand bottom uh, pool there. Yeah. I, I think about 1960, they, they uh, had concrete pools. Okay. And it was open until 2003. And it's still, I think it's still there um, back off the road. Um, yeah, the grandson of Dave Conrad, uh, through attrition, he got the uh, property and he sold the water light rights to a company, at, I, I, I think it's in Canada, and they haul water out of there all the time. Oh, wow. So it's still being used for something, but just not for not right. for swimming recreation anymore. Uh, looks like it was a fun place, and that would have been neat to have seen the Beach Boys there before <laughs> seasons. I know Dick Hatfield does a he does a program about just about Lakewood. Um, right. So that's um, so what were question nineteen? What were the three fraternal organizations with state homes in Springfield that earned it the nickname the Home City? The Odd Fellows, the Masons, and the Knights of Pythias. Yes. You are right. <laughs> yeah. And I was saying the last picture has their homes on it as well. Um, although this is a different, this is the one that would have been out on, um, around, about where Mercy Hospital is now. Um, the one I included on this slide is the, the one that was uh, PP Mast's um, mansion that later became the Pythian home. But we've got the Masonic and the Pythian and the IOOF, which are all still standing. Yeah. Um, Masonic is still in use. IOOF is still in use um, just as a regular nursing home that's no longer connected to the Odd Fellows. And then the Pythian um, closed. Gone. Turner They're, Foundation owns it. But, so the tur Turner owns, yeah. So the back buildings are all gone um, over there, but the original uh, mast home is still standing and, and owned by the Turner Foundation. Yeah. Who's, who has put work into restoring it. Um, so. That's a, we, what are actually, the eventual plans for that building? Do you know? Um, I don't think they, I think that their plans are just to maintain it for now, to keep it from, you know, falling down. But uh, uh, I know that there's been, they've brought in, they've had days where they had listed publicly online where people could come in and, and help with um, works on like a, on a Saturday. I don't I mean, it hasn't been done in, in, in a while, but um but I know that they've they've been working to, to clean it up inside and, and do some restoration work. That um, is actually the second home of Phineas T. Mass. The the his original home is across the street on High Street, right or, right across from the castle. Yeah, it's, it's a, a it's a brick. Yeah, it's a it's and that one's that's still standing. Right. Um, and they and then well, there was a fire in the home at one point where they they ended up going back to, in the ca in the castle in yeah. the castle and they went back to the other home while while right. the while operation repairs were done on the on the other home. It's still beautiful inside. Even I mean, oh, it um, is. I I've been in it um, a few times in the last couple of years with um, the leadership academy um, during their history day. We we uh, took people through um, to tour, um, and we asked them. Do you guys have any ideas of what could be done with this place? So I'm I'm pretty sure they they don't have any plans for it. They're still you know they're just trying to 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 keep it to keep it. Um, there was well, there, there was some talk a while back about them uh, turning it in, into some kind of museum um, uh, to display some of the collections that the Turner Foundation um, okay. has amassed, but that was a long time ago. So but yeah, it's a beautiful one up on the hill there. Um, Natalie, I know I've asked you before, um, but I never remember the answer. There's a radio tower or something like that on top of the old um, state theater with the letters mm -hmm. I -O 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 -F. The yeah. I The IOOF um, Union Hall used to be next door. I, it's where, where the um, key above bank the, is. Above the bank. Yeah. Hmm. So I think from what I'd seen is that it was supposed to be in perpetuity space for Odd Fellows members to meet. Was 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 what the deal was with that when that building was there. So I think that that little 
like radio tower thing on the building is kind of a leftover from that. I'm not really sure exactly, but I do know that the building that used to be where Key Bank was, was, was an IWF owned um, building. The IWF, uh, I remember on McCrite Avenue, they had a nice little fish pond there with goldfish in it. And I used to walk down uh, Third Street and go in there. It was not far from where Brooks Lawrence lived uh, at that time. And I would go there and I would see large goldfish coming hmm. around in there. Was it on the, it was on the grounds then? It was on the ground, definitely. Oh. Well, there's definitely, yeah, there's not, there, are, I, as far as I know, there's not any pond out there now, yeah. um, but. Uh, question 20. In 1948, this local dentist started a youth tennis program that served over 17,000 local children over 40 years. Steve Schindler. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, we helped him a lot. <laughs> yeah. So, Dr. Dredge, you, I, Carol, I know you mentioned him earlier. Yeah, I did. <laughs> if you look at that picture on the lower right-hand side, before you put his name on, the picture was bigger. But if you look at the picture right where you see where the Oops. umpire chair is up high, mm -hmm. the picture that comes straight down, that's the net. The girl right next to the net in the front row with the racket intersecting the net a little bit. That's, yeah, the taller of the two, that girl right there. That's his daughter, Marilyn. Oh. Okay, I will have to mark that because we because because yeah. this next one here, uh, this we got this yesterday. Another copy of the picture from um, uh, Dan Walter from the Champaign County Historical Society. Right. Um, Dan he, was part of that program for a while. He, yeah, so he brought this in. These were his patches. This was he said these were the leader patches that as they got more proficient, they would take groups of of students themselves. Right. Um, this was the general YWCA, YMCA patch, yep. um, and then this was his his uh, racket that he gave that has um, strung by Nick Bolatieri. Is that Bolatieri, who is up here in the picture? Let me go back to the big one. Um, he's that's him on the left there. So yep. he was a um, major tennis trainer, trained a lot of people that went on to win Wimbledon, and um, yeah, so that was. He wasn't an honorable man. He did not last long in Springfield. He did not? <laughs> okay. Uh, you go to the big picture again on the slide before this one. Mm -hmm. If you see that tall gal, Marilyn, that I pointed to earlier, if you go yeah. to her right, to her right, not your right, her right. Okay, her right. Keep on going, keep on going. And that little boy right there, that's her brother, Greg. Okay. He's tennis pro out at the bubble or out at Springfield Racquet Club for years. I think I think Greg is the one who gave us um, Dr. Dredge's collection in the last couple of years. Um, That's Greg right there. So, trying to remember if he told us that when he gave us the picture. He gave us a really large copy of the picture. Um, this is the one that we have. It also appears in our uh, Heartland exhibit book. But um, here was no, this. This was this picture is. I don't know if we have a date on this particular yeah, picture. For sure. It'd be about 1950. Okay. 49, no, no, that'd be in the 60s. This is the 60s? Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It looks like Bill Getman in second in the middle, the second to the left. Looks no, like Bill Getman. He wasn't. Are, there. I'll have to, Bob, next time you're in, I'll have to bring out the big picture. And, okay. and, and we'll, 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 we'll label his daughter and son and anyone else that we can find in this picture too. Maybe we'll blow this one up really big and put it online and tell people to tag themselves. <laughs> that might be a good one to do. <laughs> Bill, little, Gedman, Bill Gedman was a, a great tennis player. The two little girls to the left of Marilyn, so the other side, the little girl in the front, that's Ann Martin. Okay. John Martin uh, on Home road between Fountain and Lime. There was a door, or the house with a pink door all the time. <laughs> out her house. The little girl right behind her, over her left shoulder right there. That's Barbara Rollins. She's a Possum Shawnee girl. And uh, was a high school tennis coach in the county. Very successful, very fine player in her day as well. So there's a couple. All right, yeah, Ski, I'll get you a big copy of this picture that you can write on, too, and then we'll, we'll put it in the file with it so we, we can identify some more people. That would be great. I'm sure the Poldy boys were in there. 
No, I think this this no, would be a, a good candidate to put online and tell people to look for themselves. I think this yeah. would be a, a great this one to do. Before Gunter, Gunter was uh, at a high. He was not there at that time. Really? No, he was there after Nick. But Gunter graduated from South Springfield High in 50, 55, I think. And he was state champion in tennis. Right. In you remember Owen, you remember Owen Conover, the guy that had one arm? Yes. He was a pretty good player, as I remember. He did mm -hmm. all right. Well, that's the last question that we have. So I, I, if you guys think of anything else to add to anything that we've seen here, you can email or call or... or um, or posted on on our Facebook or something. Um, we'll be. Yeah, let me let me stop sharing so I can see you guys again. Um, so yeah, there's if anything you guys can think of to add to this stuff because um, I guess the the tennis stuff we just got yesterday. So we'll be putting that in the archives and and down in the collections. So any extra information we can add or any any extra information anybody has on anything. Um, Natalie, is great to have. Yeah. Natalie. Since we have all these historians here, <laughs> do you, is there anyone that ever remembers a connection from the Upper Valley Pike to the Lower Valley Pike other than going on Route 40? Like another road that connected them? Well, I, why would it be called Upper and Lower Valley if it didn't have a connection? If there was, it may have been well before Natalie and my time. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> it was definitely that. Or it was before, before my time, too. <laughs> See, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure everything we've talked about today was before yeah. my time. <laughs> I only know stuff because I work here. <laughs> <laughs> one, one little tidbit you talked about uh, uh, Betty Pitzer and Jim Rhodes. Mm -hmm. When Betty was at Wittenberg with Elwood, Betty wrote the words to the alma mater at Springfield High School. Really? Yeah. Really? Is that the one they still use? Far above Mad River Valley? Yep. Which came from far above Cayuga waters. <laughs> Shame on you, Barbara. <laughs> so there's another new one. <laughs> yeah. Did not know that. Mm -hmm. Learn something new all the time. So, well, how did you guys do? Or not very good. <laughs> I, I was you, trying to make I was trying to make this one easier. <laughs> she said at the staff meeting that she thought these were too general and specific because because we were talking about it before the first trivia night. We weren't we don't have a good gauge of no. you know because we work here so we don't know what's hard and what isn't. Yeah. And then she comes out with a how many telephones were there in Springfield? No, that was <laughs> that was that was just so, that was just so we could use some fun pictures of oh, telephones. Oh, okay. So that wasn't a question you got, but that wasn't from it was like, the Springfield or what? It it definitely was, Casey. <laughs> <laughs> I'd venture to guess nobody um, got that one right. No, no, I wouldn't expect anybody to. But I see um, five check marks. That means bad. I, <laughs> I got three wrong. If that's oh, mean, that's pretty ooh, good. That's, that's really good. good. That's, wow. That's I think I got one right. Count how many you got wrong? <laughs> I got one right. <laughs> well, we figure if nobody, if if anything, everybody learned something. So. <laughs> But that's why I try to include pictures as much as possible, too, so, just so you'd have something fun to look at. <laughs> well, thank so. you so much, Natalie. Yeah. These, are, these are fun. They all well, are. well, thanks. And we have, well, coming up in a couple of weeks, it'll be, um, we'll have a, a special guest, um, George Williman, who is the, um, he's from Springfield, but he um, is the head of the Nitrate Film Vault at the Library of Congress. Um, he is going to do a presentation about um, Edis Edison films, uh, oh. Edison Kinetophone films, and in, in their in a connection to Springfield that they have as well. Um, so it should be interesting. He's done um, other old film presentations before that are that are really interesting. He's got some fun stuff. So he did. Um, he did a. It, this has been many years ago, but he did a program for us on uh, Clark and McCullough, the the vaudeville comedians turned movie stars. 
Um, that would have been to, a long time ago. Um, but you may have, some of you may have seen him then. So, so yeah, that'll be, that'll be in a couple of weeks. Um, he'll be doing that. Um, but we're going to, we're going to keep, we're going to keep doing this um, even beyond when, when we reopen. Um, Cause oh, it's, it's fun to, to do these things and, and chat with people and share um, stuff. So, and as always, if anybody, you know, has any interesting ideas for different formats or different types of programs, we could do um, interactive programs, uh, you know, always feel free to send us a message. Um, 